welcome you all to another edition of The Beat. We come to you today from the Bright Complex in the south end of Kyle Field. Earlier this morning, 12th Man Production brought you its National Signing Day show. Kevin Sumlin and his staff inked another good class in 2015, but not all of them put their name on the dotted line today. Some enrolled early, they've been on campus, and we're going to introduce you to them to start the show. We begin on the offensive side of the ball with their coordinator, Jake Spavadol. Okay, time now to look at the early enrollees on offense. These are guys on campus at this very moment. There's four on this side of the ball. First coach, we'll discuss Jordan Davis. He is a freshman, six foot four, 255, so a good frame on a young body. He's a tight end that comes to you from Clear Lake High School, just south of Houston. Yeah, you're sitting here, we're talking about Jordan. Um, you know, Jordan is a big, unique body. If you look at all these clips that he had throughout high school, he, uh, you know, he was the outside receiver. So, you know, he's definitely going to be an addition when we can attach him into the line of scrimmage at times. But like right here, here's a quick hitch route. You can see the explosion, the burst out of there for a 250, 60 pound kid. That's, that's pretty impressive. And then watch him break this kid off right here. He puts him right there. He falls flat on his face and he keeps moving on with the ball. So you can see how explosive he is, how hard he is to tackle and you know, just the ball skills that he can do. Next up, quite the talented wide receiver from Suaro, Arizona. Scottsdale, actually the city. Suaro is high school, so he's obviously familiar with a guy like Cal Allen. This is Christian Kirk, the wide receiver. Christian is a very dynamic player. He, uh, he played, he actually scored six touchdowns from six different positions this year. So you're gonna see a mixture of everything. Like right here is his ability at running back, right? So right here, the quarterback's handed off to him. You know, you could see us probably in the future doing a little of this because he's got that talent. If you look at the speed, the speed is, is very impressive. He's a 4-4 type kid. You know, he set an Arizona State record for touchdowns and receiving yards, and he's considered probably one of the, have one of the best high school careers ever in the state of Arizona. Here's an example of a punt return. All right, so this is gonna be, I know Coach Banks is gonna be very fired up for this kid because he, he returned a lot of kickoff returns and punt returns. You can see how he can, he can catch and he can get upfield and he can stop and start and very, very quickly. And right there, he's just outrunning everybody. And, and again, it's, it's pretty impressive uh, just to watch this kid go. Next up, another wide receiver. This one went the junior college route, originally from Yoakum, Texas, went to Blinn College. He's a sophomore with three years to play. And Jake, that's Damian Ratliff. Yeah, definitely. Damian is a, a pretty unique story, very similar to uh, Josh Reynolds. He was an overlooked kid out of high school and he ended up going to Blinn Junior College and he ended up shattering a lot of records. And he came on the map. They, they ended up ranking him as the number one junior college receiver in the country. So this is a very fortunate get just from, especially from a guy right down the road. You can see his ability. Uh, he's a longer type kid, very similar to Josh Reynolds. Right here, you can see the, how he can adjust to the ball and hit that on his back shoulder. You know, that, that's a very tough catch, and for him to be able to adjust in the air and, and have good ball skills and catch that and get upfield is, is a great play for that kid. And finally, we come to offensive lineman Keaton Sutherland, a freshman out of Flower Mound, Texas, and Marcus High School. And certainly, you got a pretty good one here, Jake. Yeah, definitely. Keaton is a, a, he's a very large individual, and, and he can move very well. And down here, they got him at tight end down here at the bottom of the screen. Similar concept to what we just saw. Watch him reach and, and seal that edge, which he ends up taking about three guys out on this. He takes out the safety, and then the, a backside safety trips over it, which leads a, leaves a great hole for this running back to run through so right there Keaton ends up sealing that whole entire side of the defense off and gives this kid a great hole to run through all right like right here will I think you could run through that hole no probably not <laughs> <laughs> well as always we appreciate your time a happy signing day to you <laughs> I appreciate it will that's our offensive coordinator Jake Spavadol when we return we take John Chavis into the film room the Beat is presented by AT&T, building you a better network. Welcome back to The Beat. We continue to introduce you to the early enrollees of the 2015 Texas A&M signing class. Most of them inked the dotted line on Wednesday, but some did early. And now we look at the defensive side of the ball with John Chavis.
All right, so let's take a look at some of these early enrollees on the defensive side of the ball. There are three of them that are already on campus at Texas A&M. And Coach, we'll start with a defensive back. He originally hails from Wiggins, Mississippi, and went to Gulf Coast Community College in that state. Uh, this is a, he'll be a sophomore, and that's Justin Evans. Well, what you see here early, and, and obviously when you start talking about safety play, you're talking about your last line of defense. Uh, you know, you get to be a great tackler, but also you have to be a, a guy that can cover, cover wide receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Got a chance to see him here in, in, in terms of uh, being a tackler, and there's no hesitation. It's full speed to the football, uh, gets the ball carried on the ground in a hurry. Another look at him, and again, what we talked about is being able to cover. Great, great job breaking on the ball. You got to be a little careful in the league now in terms of where you make contact right there, but uh, uh, a great job breaking on the ball. Again, you can see him getting involved in the run game early, uh, creating a situation where they think they've got a, a dump off to the back, and all of a sudden the safety shows up and there's no play. Next, we have a junior college transfer in Claude George at linebacker, originally from Lafayette, Louisiana, and Acadiana High School, but comes to Texas A&M from Hutchinson College in Kansas, a junior coach, Claude George, here at linebacker. Uh, Claude's a young man that has some versatility, uh, can play on the line, off the line. Uh, obviously, you see, see here an opportunity to be a great pass rusher, getting off the edge and, and making a big play that results into a safety. Two thirty-five is his size, and he's a junior college player. Does he kind of come in body ready for for the SEC? There's no doubt he's more mature, and, and and that's a big part of it is the maturity. You get a chance to see him in space here. Uh, you get a chance to see his quickness. You see how explosive he is. And again, he's a guy that can play on the line or off the line. You love those big hits. <laughs> And finally, a freshman who is already on campus at Texas A&M University. He's from Cedar Hill, Texas, back-to-back -back state champions. And this is Richard Moore, a linebacker out of the Dallas area. And you see Richard obviously coming from a program that has a lot of tradition itself. Uh, very physical football player, great instincts. Great flexibility, comes out of his hips really well at the point of contact. When you get those guys that you hear state champion next to their name, does that always add a little extra to them? <laughs> well, you know, in, in some cases, obviously, it's a, uh, it's a program where he's used to winning, and, you know, certainly, uh, you know, he knows what it takes to get to that level, and that's always a plus. But it's the play, the play on the field that matters the most, and here's an opportunity to see him run through a blocker, obviously with great contact on the blocker, right to the ball carrier and making a big play again. Now, I'm sure you've heard the comments by now. Kevin Sumlin in this offense for three seasons. They've lit up the scoreboard. They put up yards. But they never did in three tries against your defense over there in Baton Rouge against LSU. Are you ready to share some of those secrets on how you stopped the Aggie offense? <laughs> well, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we had good good players, very good players. And, uh, you know, that's a big key. Uh, you got to have good players to be successful in this league. And that's why recruiting is so important. And that's been basically the task since you landed in College Station is this recruiting class of 2015. But you mentioned you got to mingle with a few players on the current defensive roster. What are you seeing thus far as even after signing day, spring ball's getting closer and closer? Well, can't wait. You know, obviously that's going to be a big, big time for us. Going to be very important. But the the big thing you see is you see a group of young men that uh, I feel like it's very hungry. You know, they want to win. They want to be good. And, and certainly that's a great starting point because it's all about their attitude and their approach. It's, it's, uh, it's the will to prepare to win. That's what's important. And uh, I, I think you can see that and feel that here at Texas A&M. Coach, we thank you for the time. Have a good signing day. It's not over yet, but we appreciate you joining us this morning. Glad to be with you. That's John Chavis, and we'll be back in just a moment.
This segment of The Beat is brought to you by Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. Welcome back to this edition of The Beat. We continue to cover National Signing Day, A&M Inc., their 2015 class. Some of the members on the current roster obviously were heavily recruited, and we caught up with a few of them to look back on their recruitment and the day they signed with the Aggies. It was something special. You just, just, just you get a rush, I guess, to know that you're, you're taking that next step to a, a college that, that you ever wanted to go. The number one rated passing quarterback in the class of 2013. Allen play action on second down, completes over the middle. Malcolm Kennedy, touchdown, Texas A&M. I think it was throughout my sophomore year when I started to get more, uh, more attention and talking to more people. And I realized that one more semester of high school wasn't going to change my life. And I realized that if I enroll early in college, it will change my life. And so uh, I actually came up to my parents and uh, told them that I changed my mind and I wanted to and we did all the things necessary. It was real easy. I only had to take a couple extra classes and, and I got enrolled early. That's what you build the program off of is in-state kids and, and mostly in-state people and you see that in Texas. I mean, I'm like one of 12 or 13 out-of-state kids on the team. And so I really think that out-of-state kids can contribute a lot. As you can see, I'm trying to contribute the most I can and you see a lot of Louisiana kids here contributing and stuff too. but. Well, their pitch was a hometown hero. You build, you build teams off of kids who've lived in the state and kids who take pride in that. And since I've gotten here, I've, I've adopted the state and I've taken pride in it too. Miles Garrett, the true freshman pass rush specialist, got him. You got to look at all the schools that offered you. Um, even if you, you, you haven't got offered by your favorite school, you got to look into that or look if they got your major or your minor, whatever you're trying to do. So I mean, there's a lot of things that can go into it. And there's a lot of pressure that's put on you, but you have to deal with it uh, accordingly so you can you know, make, make the right decision for you and your family. And when I came here, I knew that it was the right place for me. Just as soon as I walked in, as soon as I met all the coaches and I uh, met with the players, it, was, it just felt like the right place for me. And immediately, it just felt like this is, the, this is the place. I mean, I went to a lot of other places, but I mean, they don't compare. I was that guy. That was that, you know, that fifth, that fifth kind of dude. If they didn't get their top four, I was that kind of just, you know, just in case, dude. Wide open. Oh, my gosh. Josh Reynolds, touchdown, Aggies. I ended up deciding whether I want to go to D2 or JUCO. And then, you know, talking to my mom and stuff, I just thought I was a lot better than D2. So I was worried about if I was going to make it out of JUCO, you know, or just get lost in there like, you know, like a couple people do. It was definitely a relief, you know. I mean, mainly because, you know, it was in-state. My parents can come see every game they wanted to. And then, you know, it helped that, you know, it was Texas A&M. They just got to the SEC, you know. Cause Brady came at me, <laughs> cause Brady came at me one time, was asking me if I was scared to play, in, if I was one of those dudes I was scared to play in the SEC, you know. And, well, <laughs> no, I'm not really scared of too much stuff. This segment of The Beat is brought to you by Pepsi. Now is what we make it. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get out there and live it. It's time to live for now. This weekend, very busy in Texas A&M athletics. We're going to look back on it right now, starting with the men's basketball team taking on Vanderbilt. The Aggies were in search of their sixth consecutive win. hat on the hype of what's going on or you gonna hang your hat on the work that we put in to get put ourselves in this place that's the aggie way that's what's on your shirt all right man together on three one two three together in front of the largest crowd of the season at reed arena billy kennedy's aggies got out to a 13-0 start on the commodores Gave it to Robinson. Here's a slam on an alley oop from Alex Robinson to Alex Caruso. And here's Peyton Allen with a three. Got that one. Aggies just made it a 9 0 ball game. And now we'll force Kevin Stallings to call a timeout. Stolen by Jones, slammed by Green. And I love that kind of basketball. Nothing excites to play like a dunk. The Aggies stayed out front for the entirety of the first half and led by 16 at the break. 
nor would they relinquish the advantage over the final 20 minutes. This side, it comes to House, open for a three, let go with it, made it, oh, and he's yeah. fouled, and he gets an and one. And he will lay it up, and he made on a steal. A&M takes down the doors. Daniel House scored 13 points, and he had 22 against Auburn last Tuesday. And there you have your SEC Player of the Week. The conference gave House that honor on Monday. I just want to shout out to uh, you know, all our teammates, six in a row. We're not done yet. Long season, you know what I mean? Turn up. Women's basketball brought a cold front to Reed Arena when Auburn came in Saturday. They rang in February with a frozen themed contest. Fans were invited to wear the costume of their favorite character from the Disney hit film. Fitting that Auburn was ice cold, A&M held them to just 45 points. Effort and intensity on the defensive end of this basketball game. Now Walker at the shot clock, got it. The opportunity awaits Gary Blair's squad as the calendar turns from January to February. And you get the sense that this veteran group has a great run in them over the final month of the regular season. If you play team defense, if you listen to the, the coaches, the scout, Coach Bond had it down to a science. That's what our assistants do, ladies. Coach Blair is always big about next man up. And depending on how you practice, is if you're going to get to play or not. And so I think that we've had a good few days of practice since the South Carolina game. And I think uh, that gave our bench a lot of um, confidence going into the next game. Finally, the 15th ranked men's tennis team beat number five Ohio State in College Station. The match started on Saturday, but was delayed due to weather. The Aggies finished off the Buckeyes on Sunday, 4-3. A&M is now two and one on the young season and has their next six matches at the Mitchell Center. Just about time to close out this edition of the Beat from the Bright Complex, but for all you need on this 2015 football signing class, stick with 12thman.com. They've got rundowns and highlights on each signee. Next up for Kevin Sumlin and his crew is Spring Ball. It begins March 2nd. Two days later on the 4th, it's Aggie Pro Timing Day, and we will cover it all on the Beat. For this edition, so long, everybody.